Hello. Um, so this is gonna be quite annoying. I don't dare to push or pull. Give it back. So I just want to know uh, what the efficiency is of the my own design kind of method because well let's explain later on or before this I'm not sure how I added this but on the ground there's my voltmeter there very tiny and uh, I'm gonna play a 1k tone and see what kind of output we get 2.84 that's good enough okay Here, here's a, a nice thing you might be able to hear I'm, I'm pretty sure you can hear I use a laptop and a separate deck listen when I plug in my power supply it's a dirty power supply but I assume most of the noise is also the uh, converters in the laptop that screw up everything like the converter that converts 90 volt, 19 volt to 5 volt USB power etc. It's terrible. I really needed another device to test this to test anything because now it's running from battery because the noise is incredible. Here you go. I'll plug it in. Ugh, that's nasty. Terrible. But anyhow, I'll uh, measure the SPL. I changed a few things. Uh, and also the impedance uh, increased to 5 ohm. So I want to know if the method I used to make this panel when I convert it back to 4 ohms, still got the desired SPL. I'll unplug my power supply because this noise is insane. Then uh, let's go. I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, pop, pop, pop. SPL is around 86, which is quite decent for a 5 ohm load. So if I go back to 4 ohm, I should be able to reach like 86, maybe 87. So no problems there. Cool. Uh, there is still a problem in the top end, which I will show you in the, in the video itself, but not sure where it's coming from yet. So, why are these wires here? I mean, it had terminals. <clears throat> uh, reason is, I changed a few things just to test. It's not gonna be like the final version, but... This thing has uh, an option to only remove the... That was my uh, meter. Remove the backplane. So, I'll try to do that. <laughs> Yeah. No. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's the worst that could happen. Oh no. Well, there it goes. I'm afraid I'm not able to test anything. <clears throat> I knew this was tricky. Fuck. Well, as you can see, I made it a ribbon kind of structure. Uh, it's unsupported on the sides, just held by the foam. And now it's also fucked up here. So I'm not sure if it's still able to play. I think 
we have some free resonances because the crappy shit magnets let go of the metal. Fuckers. Should use some proper glue. But it might be H, you know. So this was the foam on the back right now, and I'm gonna replace it with the original foam, which is slightly thicker. <clears throat> but uh, I assume it will like touch the foil right now because I screwed up my foil. And now first I have to glue back the magnets. Then add new felt and uh, put it back. But this part now is fucked. So whatever I do now in measurements, it, it might not it might not be like how it should be. But look, it's quite nice. I changed a few things that I would do if it was my <coughs> design. Uh, there are a few more things that I would do if it was my design. But it might lose like a tiny bit of output. Like for instance, this trace in the middle that has no aluminium. I would either put aluminium there or make the tracks wider. Um, people asked it before why I always have my tracks. Let me have a, something to show. Well, going almost to the middle of the magnet. This one does it as well, almost. So the magnet is much wider and sitting here. And they leave a tiny bit of space without aluminium in the middle. There are many designs where the space in the middle is as wide as the magnet. So did this design. And what happens, this unsupported mylar that does not, is in no way driven, will make a ugly frequency response. I tried it in the past few builds since I wanted to remake this thing, but I think there are some obvious flaws in the design, or at least I cannot re replicate it in a decent manner. And I can show you uh, the measurements here. There is an obvious problem that remains, even if I do it like they did. I don't know what I else could do differently than doing a complete different design. Within the boundaries, of course, what is possible with um, this. So it's hard to see, but I still use the foam to support the ribbon. I like that and I, it's something I wanted to try re really long. So this is, well, this was a good exercise. So the ribbon is actually much wider, but it's you know pressed down by the by the foil uh, by the foam on both sides. Now, question is how much wider? It... There is now a huge piece that is supported by foam that doesn't do much. But could you make that a tiny bit smaller and the membrane itself wider? Who knows? That's for another. That's something I would try for my own design, not this one, of course. Um, so you see a lot of traces, but only uh, the outer outer traces are not current driven. They're just there to hold shape. Because losing shape, like I did here by putting some magnets in there, uh, will result in all kinds of distortion. Which we probably will see in a minute, that this one doesn't function anymore as it should. I think. Still, I got, you know, um, I am gonna try, but I think um, it will create distortions, but the only thing, maybe we can see something happening in the frequency response that might relate to the felt I used. 
So where is the other fill? So I'm gonna give this a little spray paint, uh, spray glue. Oh, I glued it to the table. So the uh, felt will stick. <clears throat> so now, the question is, can I get it back? This might be troublesome. I'm right, gonna do it step by step. Putting it back in is much easier than getting it uh, getting it out. By the looks of it. Okay, gonna test it. Who knows? Yes, it's dark. So same measurement, but now I'll, uh, well, we changed up the felt on the back to a much thicker felt and I screwed up my ribbon. But let's see if it screwed up everything and if it did change anything. And the answer is no, it did not, well, the nah, distortion down low is slightly, slightly bit higher, but not, not all that much. And the high end or top end did not change at all. So, uh, old fell. Um, so yeah, <laughs> apparently, uh, even when you fuck up the ribbon, like, quite severely, it performs kind of the same, but uh, far better than the flat membrane it originally had, or at least the ones I did. And I'm not sure it's because I did it. It's also worse than the original foil in the other loudspeaker that I still have. There is a peak at 6K and then a dip at, I believe, no surprise, but I think at 12K. So it's a wiggle. So it, that's usually what happens. So it might be uh, just the depth of the magnet screwing that up. What I can do is add some more felt in the back and see what, what it does, but I don't think it helps much. It might be the unsupported piece of Myler screwing me over. So I got some felt there. See what it does. I don't have high hopes for this. I don't think it changed anything except for lowering the low end. So okay, it did flatten out this top problem I have a little bit. Not enough, but it does something. So my assumption is it might be just cavity resonance. That's one thing it might be. Or it might be the unsupported piece of crap in the middle that does not have aluminium foil, but I cannot check that right now. I have to make a new foil for that. This one looks much, 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 much better than my previous attempts. By far, it sounds much better as well. So um, yeah, I'm pretty uh, happy. Anyhow, that's it for today. So it's more, more or less mostly measurements and I don't have the complete coil because I did, didn't want to bother anyone else with cutting a coil once more. Uh, yeah, I'll explain later on what I, what I did. Too many things. This is the fourth membrane by now. First rivet version by the way, but, and that works. See ya.